What this government is doing now is nothing less than a gag order. Censoring the voices of creators wasn't enough. Now they're having to stop members of parliament from debating this atrocious bill at committee. Why? I would like to remind my colleague that uh, the Bloc Québécois supports Bill C-10. The NDP supports Bill C-10. The Greens support the Bill C-10. And, and artists across the country support Bill C-10. The government tried to end debate on the seemingly popular Bill C-10 today. The Conservatives have been filibustering the bill since April. They say that legislation would allow the federal government to limit what Canadians post online. The government says the goal is to protect Canadian artists and content. So should Bill C-10 be pushed through? The power panel is here for one last round. Paul, Marty, Sherelle and Emily. And Emily, I'd like to start with you. I mean, the Conservatives kind of got their way today. They used procedural shenanigans uh, to put off the government's move to end debate, essentially a slowdown of the fast track. Should this bill be pushed through before the summer break? Do you think that's something that's in the best interest of the country? Uh, I think that the bill will be pushed through. I also think that uh, if there is time for that debate, uh, the debate should be had uh, because some people are leg legitimately worried. Uh, however, there's been already uh, some change in the bill since the first uh, flags were raised in terms of precising what exactly the intent uh, is, uh, which is to make sure that there is uh, some way for the government to, to uh, demand from social media platform uh, that they promote uh, Canadian content, for example, in terms of their ads, uh, what they push, etc. Uh, so it's more about uh, having some impact on the algorithms. Um, and so, um, so yeah, so yeah, so that's why it, there's so much support. And for me, actually, it's really, really fascinating debate to watch as someone that has a feat in both the English and French uh, Canadian media uh, world to see how exactly the same thing can have uh, two different uh, side effects. And we've had so many debates yeah. on free speech in Quebec in the last months. I don't think anybody can say um, that the Bloc Québécois is not a, a, a party that will try to debate on things that have a, something to do with free speech. And so it's really interesting to see what takes people's, uh, you know, uh, reflexes or not in terms of this debate. But it's really, I think more from a sociology standpoint, there should be a thesis on this. <laughs> you, know, you know, Marty, I, I, I saw you during the, the Gil, uh, Minister Gilbeau clip where he said the Greens support it. Then you were pointing on yeah. that's the mm -hmm. argument, right? So, I mean, the conservative they're the only ones fighting against this bill and, and kind of hurt against it. I mean, yep. t talk about it. what are the politics of this in Quebec? Uh, you'll notice that he mentioned uh, the Bloc Québécois first. Mm -hmm. uh, he's very, very uh, adamant about that. Uh, I, I, I had to write a, a short piece about it today, so and I, I timed it. It was something like eight minutes. And after those procedural shenanigans you were talking about, it took about eight to ten minutes for Ladzisk, which is a, a group that represents artists here and mm -hmm. artists and performers here in Quebec, to come out with a with a, a press statement, sort of denouncing what the conservatives were doing. This is a very very important bill for them in Quebec. Um, Paul was right before the break, you know, sort of saying that they, it's a win-win situation. Um, the only thing I'd say is that if they're able to pass this, it's really, really going to have a lot of effect on the electoral fortunes of the Liberals. They love this bill. They adore it. And the proof positive is that they have stuck by it. They have hyped it, uh, despite the absolutely atrocious rule on the part of, uh, of uh, the Minister Gilbo. Uh, they, this is this is a warhorse uh, for them. It's gonna. Uh, they not only want to steal the conservative thunder, but they want to be able to grab away a lot of that block vote uh, that they're worried about here in Quebec. So uh, what you're seeing here is essentially an election playing out on the cultural field. Sure, I'll pick up on uh, what Marty said. He, I believe he used the word atrocious to describe the heritage minister and his handling of this. Uh, he has had a rough ride in some English uh, language interviews about this and has not gone too well. And he's been criticized for it. I mean, are Canadians paying attention to that? Or how are they going to view how Minister Gilbo has handled all of this? I'd say the broader, maybe general public isn't really paying close attention, but the people who are paying attention, um, they care a lot about this bill and they are incredibly vocal and incredibly active yeah. online and they can really kind of stir the pot on this. Um, this bill has been... I mean, it, it's been it's been bad in terms of the communications on it. It's been it's been pretty bad. The fact that um, the minister has been unable to 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 say and and elucidate on you know what exactly this bill is and what it's meant to do and how it's meant to help or or not just leaves all of these avenues for critics of the bill to come through and say, well, 
you said this first and now but you actually mean that and that was wrong and this was wrong and and it just gets so confused and so muddled to the point where he the minister has to go back and clarify well I didn't mean that and we're going to change this part of the bill and and I mean that's that's a bad that's probably a bad bill or it's a bad minister to Roll to up. you know take lead of it mm-hmm. um and yeah. the fact that there there hasn't been you know a real um stream change of you know who is in charge of of this bill and and taking charge of it and making it you know get to the point where people can actually support it um is is, is a you know it's, it's bad leadership so paul the communications has been suboptimal uh but you know the politics of this bill <laughs> a, as everyone seems to think has been pretty good for the liberals especially in quebec which really matters uh, for this upcoming election so for the Conservatives to win, they got to do better in Ontario, but they've also got to make some growth in Quebec. So, like, what they're against this so strongly, what does that cost them in Quebec? Uh, I guess we'll see. I, I see um, Aaron O'Toole's decision to come out strongly against this bill as a final uh, admission that his other efforts to get noticed and liked in Quebec haven't gotten him very far. So he, he might as well pick a horse, and he's going to he's going to pick the uh, outside Quebec horse. Uh, on Bill C-10. Um, the, the, the part of the reason the government's um, communications have been bad and part of the reason the opposition's uh, attacks have been ineffectual is that it's impossible to predict the effect of this bill once it becomes law on speech mm-hmm. because the, the bill doesn't describe uh, restrictions on speech and the government wouldn't decide restrictions on speech. Those will be decided by the CRTC. CRTC. And... Uh, CRTC, what, how the CRTC will define a producer, um, uh, what sort of equivalent of mandate commitments of, of the sort that they, re- that they require from, from the broadcast networks, how, how on earth you, you fit that into the new regime. That's essentially uh, handing the CRTC a, black, a blank check. Um, the thing that can be predicted is that some money will be paid by these global web giants and it will go towards large cultural industries, which is why LADISC can hardly stop salivating. Because LADISC is the record exactly. industry in Quebec. It's the record industry, which is the only record industry for millions of francophone Quebecers. And um, they're looking forward to the revenue from this. So that, I mean, that helps to explain um, why the speech debate has been a little bit diffuse and why the benefit to large cultural industries debate has been uh, of such advantage to the Liberals in Quebec. So, Emily, I want to get a quick final thought from you on this. If the Conservatives are offside on this, this means they're offside with the Quebec cultural sector. That has not been good for them in elections in the past. I I mean, what is their exposure here? I mean, what's the risk to them here if the the Quebec cultural sector is on one side and the Conservatives are on the other? Well, the Conservatives are never going to win riding in Montreal. And that's not if they were to win riding in Quebec, that's not where they would get. It's probably more in the Quebec City region, and there's actually quite a subculture bubble there uh, that is very much against what they call the, you know, la clique du plateau, the plateau, mm-hmm. uh, Mont-Royal, elites of Montreal, the Radio Canada elites, whatever I am, like currently, <laughs> because I live there. <laughs> and so, uh, so yeah, so it could, could play well in the Quebec City, uh, in the Quebec City re- region for some some of the folks that are the potential conservative voters, uh, people who are close. Uh, to the artistic cultural milieu are very rarely, if not, if ever, uh, cons- potential conservative voters. And so uh, by opposing uh, the cultural sector in Quebec, they're opposing uh, Quebecers that have never voted uh, for conservatives in their lives. Okay, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much, gang. That was a great conversation. Emily, Sherelle, Paul, and Marty. Thanks. Have a great weekend. Thanks.